Hey, what's up guys? Pat Washit here. And finally, Splinter Cell Blacklist is here. So here's a, some very quick gameplay of Spies vs. Mercenaries. And I'm going to be starting off with playing Spy. And if you do end up being the lucky one playing Spy, you have a, a very condensed menu that pops up. And you have different classes you can choose from. And everyone starts off with Intel Scout. The only way you can upgrade to a different class is if you have a certain amount of money. And, you know, you work your way up to custom level. And that's where you can change different weapons such as flashbangs, uh, grenades, uh, EMP grenades, all that good stuff. And I don't know much about all the classes yet, but uh, right now Intel Scout is pretty much, uh, you have thermal vision and you have an Intel suit. And what that does is when you activate it by hitting control, uh, it allows you to, you know, pick up enemies nearby and it kind of like identifies them. You know, very similar to Battlefield where you, you pretty much hit Q on someone, and a, you see a little marker. Kind of like that, you, you just see them off in the distance. Um, Predator, Predator is more of like a lone wolf class, I would say. Uh, you have a very, you have a, a short uh, invisible cloak you can use, and I don't know, I haven't really, I'm not very sure yet, but I don't know if the enemy can still see your shadow while you move, um, but all I know is you can turn invisible, you have smoke grenade, and you have the regular sonar goggles for Predator. There are three different intels you can hack, and what happens is uh, you and your teammates will work together in order to take one out at a time. And I don't know the time it takes to hack an intel, but it takes, I would say, roughly two to three minutes. I'm gonna give an estimate there. After you hack that one intel, you have to do the other two. It's pretty much as far as you can go. It's it's pretty much control point for Team Fortress 2, except, uh, you know, you have to do one at a time. And then when it's half time, you guys switch roles. So if you start off as spy, you, you switch over to mercenary, and then vice versa for mercenary to spy. And you guys take turns on different maps on seeing who can get more intels capped. Now, the mercenaries have a very similar menu for choosing your class as spies. The only difference is they have different names and different capabilities. For Peacemaker, you have, everyone starts off with Peacemaker. Again, until you have enough money, you upgrade to a different class. Um, for Peacemaker, you have an adrenaline suit. Pretty much, if you want it more health and you, ha you take less damage, um, you use control, you inject yourself with adrenaline. And you have a motion tracker. You'll see like a little motion tracker device in the bottom of your screen, and as the waves go out, you'll see tiny red dots pop up. I don't know the range yet of this device, but pretty much if someone is on your radar, it will pop up. Now, if someone is above you, I don't think they will show up on your radar. So keep that in mind, make sure to look up and down and around in your surroundings. For Disruptor, when you hit control, his actions are you're able to pretty much see cloaked spies and you're able to interrupt their electronics. Now, I have not been able to play against a Disruptor yet, so I don't really have much experience or game footage of what it's like to play against one who has this activated. Now, my favorite thing with the Disruptor is proximity mines. If, let's say, you are working by yourself and you don't have any teammates to work with or people to talk to, you can put proximity mines in your area so you don't have to watch them as much. The only issue is the spies could probably easily go around them by climbing something or go into a different intel point and then draw on you away from the area you're defending. I think the very first main disadvantage the the mercenaries have is they only have first person. The spies have third person, which means they are able to look around corners. They have goggles, which see, which they're able to see enemies through walls. So they have a major advantage right there. If you're planning on buying this game, uh, if you don't have anyone else to play with, I highly don't recommend buying this game uh, because right now I'm playing Lone, Lone Wolf and I have no one else to work with. So it this game got a bit frustrating because the field of view for the mercenaries is very limited. You have all this crap on your heads up display and it's very distracting for me. And I'm used to Team Fortress 2 where you can adjust this FOV and allow you to see more. But I guess this is what 
gives the spies the advantage and you have to be more aggressive and smart about your playing style. So thanks for watching guys and I appreciate you guys watching my very first Splinter Cell Blacklist multiplayer footage and I, I will definitely be playing this more. I want to be able to upgrade to all the classes, unlock everything, and give you guys more feedback and maybe some tips and tricks on playing spy and mercenary. So take it easy guys and I look forward to uploading more soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.